All right, hello everyone. This is gonna be a pretty brief introduction on how to set up your Synology NAS as a Git server. So your first step is to go in and log in to your DSM. That is the way you've been interfacing with your Synology NAS this entire time, so I hope you know how to do that. Next up is to go to Package Center and find Git and just install it. Once this installs, if we try to run it right here, we're going to get an error. That's because the way you interface with Git is to use SSH and it's default disabled. So you got to go to advanced and then go to your terminal and just enable SSH service. I would leave this as port 22 because that's the way terminal defaults to it. All right, so now we can actually run it. All right, as you can see, it's working. So now we're going to SSH into our Synology. The easiest way to do that is using either PuTTY on a PC or the built-in terminal on a Mac. So as you can see, my local IP address is 192.168.1.120. So I'm going to go over to terminal, which is pre-installed on Macs. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. All right, so we're going to SSH by typing SSH your username at your that IP address and then type in the password all right as you can see we have SSH into the Synology this is me actually on the command line within my Synology computer so I'm going to move to volume 1 which is where the first volume is made and general, which is my sh network share. Within that, I've got this repo. So I'm going to cd into the repo. By the way, if you do not know terminal or Linux commands, there are tons and tons and tons of resources online about them. They're great to learn. So as you can see, this is an empty repository. So I want to create my first repo within it. So it's easy. It's git init here the bear is important because this that specifies that this is a server share and not any other type and whatever name you want to call it dot git and boom we've got a new one so we can cd into it and as you can see we've got it if we do git logs we can see that there have been no commits to it yet so now we actually want to commit something to it right that's the entire point of doing this so we're going to open a new window, and this time we're actually going to just work locally on our Mac. So this is actually the terminal window for my Mac. So we're going to go to the folder that we want to add the new directory to. So that's in tutorials. And I'm going to make a git repos folder. All right, as you can see, I'm in the blank git directory. So now I actually want to clone the directory that's on my server. To do that, I'm going to do git clone ssh colon slash slash. So this tells it that it's going to look for an ssh git repo username again at the same IP address and then colon slash whatever this location is. So this is the location where we saved our previous files. So boom, put in your password. All right, so now there's a empty repo in there. So now let's actually commit something, right? Because there's nothing in here. So to do that, I'm just going to make up something random. All right, so now we can see that there's this test.txt document in there. And we want to commit that back to our server over here. So to do that, first git add period. This basically stages this text.txt document to be committed on the next commit. And then we're going to do git commit dash m allows you to do the comments in line. So now if we do git log, we can see that we've got this commit in here. But if we go back to the server, we can see that there are no commits in here yet. That's because we've not pushed the commits from our Mac back up to the server over here. 
So to do that, it's simple. We're going to do git push origin. And now we've pushed our branch back to the repository. And we can see this commit. So using this by terminal is cool and everything, but here it takes a long time and it's clunky. So if you want to do something easier, you can use software like fork. So right here, fork is basically a GUI for Git. So now that I've got the folder initiated, I'm going to open it. And as you can see here, it's basically interfacing instead of us going through terminal. So I can do things like push, fetch, and pull, as well as view a tree and all the com commits really easily. And you can easily see your origin, your remotes. And this one right here is origin is our NAS. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Um, there's a lot more information online, but this is a pretty brief overview on how to first set it up.